In this segment, I'm going to show how to make a modified 2.4 GHz video receiver. Uh, I've already showcased the not-so-original, although interesting idea of creating a portable video uh, scanner. This is mine. This is a 2.4 GHz video receiver that has auto-scan uh, auto scan features, a whole bunch of other crap. I like it. Modified with a panel mount uh, end connector coupled into a 15 decibel gain helical antenna using a Game Boy Advance as a primary screen, a 9.6 nickel metal hydroxide, uh, 1.6 amp, or 9.6 volts at 1.6 or 1.8 amp, yeah, either way. This is my setup. Yours may differ, but what do you need to know to actually modify a video receiver? Well, first off, you have to understand that it runs off the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, and that is what we call a microwave frequency. Frequencies have names. UHF, VHF, super high frequency, blah, 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 blah. This is microwave. So that means you need to have coaxial cable, the type of cable to carry that frequency to your device that's rated for microwave. Now, this is a RG6 coax. This is commonly used in satellite and cable TV installations. You see this? This is 75 ohm coax. This is completely wrong. Do not use RG6 or RG8 or RG58. You have to use microwave class cable. No. Yet. Nine. No. Stop. Forget. No RG8. Okay? No RG6. Don't use it. For the love of God. No. Whoa, whoa. Did I mention? No. You can't use it. What can you use? This. This is LMR 400. I have to. I have to personally thank both Dave and Andre Croy. Dave helped me out by obtaining the appropriate radio connectors, and Andre Croy helped me out getting the cable. LMR 400. LMR stands for Land Mobile Radio. This is microwave cable. This is designed for in excess of six gigahertz. We're operating at 2.4, so this is good. The problem is it's stiff. It's bulky. How in the hell are you going to attach this bulky cable? to something that has such a small little piece of coax coming out of it. Well that is where lower diameter LMR-195. LMR-195 is thinner. Now you might be saying, okay, what's the big deal? Why should I care about what coax do I use? Okay, coax is like a pipeline for water, okay? It's going to carry your signal, and if your pipeline has holes in it, if your hose has holes, holes in it anywhere, that water is going to leak out. So if you use RG6, RG8, RG58, RG58U, any of the other lower frequency cables, your signal is going to leak out of the side of it and you're going to get signal loss, significant amount of signal loss. And your signal is measured in decibels or dBs. Now, having a thicker coax means you'll have less loss. The problem is it's bulky and it's unwieldy. It's very difficult to go and run short lengths of this because it's so unwieldy. But the thicker stuff is good for really, really long runs. The thinner stuff is good for shorter runs. All of my handheld devices that I'll be showing you how to mod and create in the series will be either using LMR400, LMR195, LMR100, or LMR200 coax cable. Primarily, LMR195 and LMR400. They are the two easiest forms of microwave uh, coax that you can get your hands on. Um, I'll try to put some show notes up on where to get it. We get into that later. I think I've explained enough about coax. So, you got your hands on some coax, how the hell are you going to go and connect it to your device? And let's go to the table side and I'll explain RF connectors themselves. Again, I'd like to personally thank Dave and Andre for getting me a lot of these connectors and the coax cable that I'll be showcasing. But uh, with eno enough ass kissing, let's get on to the, the connectors and such. Okay, let's start out with some commonly used stuff, okay? Here's my Linksys router. My Linksys router has something called an RP TNC or reverse polarity TNC. Okay? Um, I've got an RP TNC adapter around here somewhere. I got so much crap. Here we go. Here's the mating end. Now, I really don't feel that I should have to explain male and female to you. Um, really, you should under have an understanding of the difference between what male and female is, you know, what boys have and you know girls don't, and vice versa. So this is a reverse polarity TNC. This is a reverse polarity TNC. 
but I don't feel like making custom reverse polarity TNC antenna cables just for this, so I bought an adapter. And this is going to turn it into an end connector. Here is another end connector. This is called a panel mount four hole end connector. They also come in a two hole variant, which I didn't purchase because I don't care. Um, this is another form of panel mount, but this one is designed to crimp onto LMR 195 cable. And here is its bigger, bigger brother. This one crimps onto the actual coax of LMR 400. We also have something called panel mount. Now there's a little, little nubbin and a little nut where we're going to be using this little guy later to uh, build some antennas. Now we've also got reverse polarity SMA as well as the mating connector for the coax. Now this has a crimp collar for LMR195. This has a crimp collar for LMR195. So what we'll be able to do is by taking this this connector, we're going to crimp it onto some cable and then solder that cable leading into the RF box of the uh, uh, of a video receiver. Before I move on too far, Wi-Fi card. See those tiny little nubbins? See, those are called high rose connectors, abbreviated UFL, also known as iPacks. Now, these are the ones that are found. This is literally an Intel Pro Wireless uh, 2200 Wi-Fi card. These connectors are not rated for, for more than 50 insertions. They're low usage. Once you plug them in, don't remove them. So it'd be a good idea if you want to have a, a Wi-Fi card, like here's my tablet, which you guys see often. I've built in a reverse polarity SMA on each side, and here's a simple crappy rubber duck antenna, to, so I have an antenna. And here's the adapter that goes from reverse polarity SMA to N, so I can use big beefy LMR400 on little itty bitty crappy, uh, crappy uh, reverse polarity SMAs. Okay. I've tried to explain as much as I can off the top of my head. I'll put a lot in the show notes. I'll put a lot of pictures up. But let's get on to the mod process, shall we? Here we have typical soldering stuff. We've got 35 watt iron, solder, desoldering braid, basic tools, cutters, needle nose pliers, angled needle nose pliers. Got a couple pair of tweezers, got a couple of screwdrivers, uh, got some kind of you know box cutter, razor blade, whatever. Go slit your wrist, go ahead and die, I don't care. Um, we got our 2.4 gigahertz uh, security camera receivers, um, and we have some LMR 195 coax that's going to be the, the prime coax of choice for a lot of the segments. And here is a female panel mount uh, end connector, and here's a crimp on female reverse polarity SMA for LMR 195. Um, when you get your coax, make sure that uh, make sure that you get the proper proper connector for crimping on. I'm not going to get into the process of using the crimpers. Um, there's plenty of information on the internet. Um, I also did a segment on Amateur Logic, I do believe episode 12, on making your own homemade crimpers so you don't have to go out and break the bank. But anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crimp on, well first I'm going to solder a length of this inside the RF box of this receiver. Have a short length of cable leading into this female connector. This female connector will then be put inside of, like the entire thing will be put in some, some kind of case once the design is finished and uh, that is that. Now you have to remember that radio acts like water in a very weak sense that if there are any holes or any gaps anywhere whatsoever if you have a break in the shield of your coax signal will leak out of there. Now with all of that said let me explain the RF box. Now this is a 2.4 gigahertz video receiver uh, made by X10. It had a panel, a panel antenna over here but it broke. I think this coax is LMR100. I can't be sure. And because I'm not sure, I can't order the proper crimp-on connector. Once you crimp a connector, there's no one crimping it. That's the end of the story. Now, yes, you can use this coax right here and solder your center conductor right in like so, but how are you going to get that shield to make sure that it shields the outer signal? You'd have to kind of bend and flex and solder the coax. Here, let me see if I can get a better, better connector. You'd have to solder it like that which is explicitly what I've done in my other scanner. But this isn't the pr appropriate way of doing things. It's not a good idea. The best way of doing this is either running the coax directly into your antenna, like, like they did here, this just solders directly into, uh, into the antenna, or replace the coax with a known, better form of coax with the appropriate radio connector. 
So this is one of my earlier model scanners that I did all my experimenting on. That's why all the crap is hanging off of it and it looks like crap. But anyway, they have these solder points that have these little wires that hold the shield on. So using your soldering iron, desolder that off. And here's the inside of the box. Inside of this box, if you notice, let me see if I can get a good shot, you can actually see the center conductor and, and the shield. Now this entire box is a radio shield. Metal reflects and contains radio waves. So when I put the, this top panel on, this isolates everything inside. It's shielding because this circuitry is very susceptible to interference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully uh, desolder the center conductor, desolder the surrounding shield, and take this off. Using a razor blade, I peel back some of the outer conduit, and I shave back some of the shielding, and I've taken the signal wire.